Uh, I'm going to read a little piece here that um, I know a couple of you at least have heard it. Um, I wrote this maybe 20 years ago. Uh, but um, I'm going through a sort of a dry spell in writing right now, and um, I wanted to participate, so I figured let me let me bring this out. Uh, it seemed appropriate for um, you know Pride Month too. So uh, just a little background: it's um, it's a one-way telephone conversation, and it's a series that I've been um, working on. Uh, this this was the first one, and then I, I had done another, and it's it's going to continue on. And it's the product of um, listening to uh, my mother talk on the phone for my whole life. Oh, yeah. So, okay. It's called Long Distance to New Jersey. <coughs> Hi, Angela. It's me, Antoinette. Good, good. I'm having a wonderful time. San Francisco is so beautiful. The weather's so chilly. I know it's summer, but you would never guess it by looking out the window. Every morning, the fog is so thick, you can't even see in front of you. Back home, if you woke up and saw this, you wouldn't go down the shore for the day because you know it's going to rain. By the afternoon, it's all cleared up. It's nice not to have the air conditioner running every second of the day. You know, Gina told me to bring some sweaters and jackets and stuff, but who can think of packing them when the humidity is so thick you can't even breathe? I know I'll catch cold the minute I walk off of the plane, and you know how those summer colds are. Gina's good, at least she says she's good. She lives in such a beautiful neighborhood, but such a tiny apartment, and the rent she pays, $1,500 for a small living room, an even smaller bedroom, and a kitchen no bigger than my bathroom. I don't know how she does it. Yeah, well, she likes it. So the other morning, Gina takes me to this nice little restaurant for breakfast, sort of like a coffee shop, but with food. Yeah, a cafe. Gina and I both ordered bagels. Angela, they were awful. <laughs> the frozen ones lenders makes it better. Really, I'm not kidding. They don't know how to make a decent bagel in California. And forget about finding a, finding a deli, there are, a good deli, there are none. Yeah, so that afternoon, Gina suggests that we go for Japanese food. Yes, Japanese. So I says, Gina, hon, I ain't eating no raw fish. So she says, then how about Thai? And I says, Thai? How about plain old Chinese? So she takes me to Chinatown for Chinese food. I ordered lo mein and Gina ordered chow mein. So we're waiting almost 10 minutes for our food. Oh, and get this. They don't give you crispy noodles and duck sauce while you're waiting. Can you believe it? <laughs> so the waiter finally brings the food and gives me the chow mein. Oh, no, I says. I, I ordered the lo mein. This is lo mein, he says. No, this is chow mein, I says. That's lo mein, I says, pointing to Gina's plate. Well, it winds up, they call chow mein lo mein and lo mein chow mein now. <laughs> I don't know, but the, root, the food was real good, Ange. Even better than that Hong Kong Gardens on Route 3 in Sea Caucus. <laughs> yes, you was there a few times with me. You know, the place with them blowfish lamps and the mechanical parrot at the door that says, take any table, take any table. <laughs> yeah, that's the place. Well, this place was much better. The Orientals out here really know how to cook, but they don't call them Orientals. They call them Asians. <laughs> Something about Oriental being lamps and rugs and stuff, I don't know. They all look the same to me. So yesterday, I took a tour of the wine country. Oh, it was gorgeous. I've never seen so many grapes in all my life. They were lined up for miles. You'll see. I took lots of pictures. Gina was working, so I went by myself with the tour bus. But I did meet this real nice lady from Akron, Ohio. Her name's Nancy, and she just recently lost her husband, too, so we had a lot to talk about. And it winds up, we're both here for the same wedding. Can you believe it? What a coincidence. So we went to four different wineries. Sure, there's more than one. There's about nine, but we didn't have time enough to see them all, but we, so we only took the tour of the first place. Well, they were all the same. How much grapes can you see at one time? We just went to the tasting rooms. Yeah, they gave us all different kinds of wines. Nah, I was free. But by the time we left, I was stumbling all over the place, and Nancy had to help me to the bus. Angela, I haven't been that drunk since that last time in Atlantic City. Yes, remember that? So we get back to San Francisco, and Nancy asked me to go to dinner with her. It was still early, so I figured, why not? We went to this restaurant set up like a patio outside. They had all kinds of different foods, sort of like a diner. I had a grilled chicken sandwich. It was all right. I like the food better at that diner in Arlington, the place that we go to after St. Anthony's Bingo. Yes, that place. This place was real nice, but it was packed with sissies. 
There were men hanging all over each other and held, holding hands right out in the open. Yeah, well, it was a good thing I finished eating, because I'd seen enough, so Nancy paid the bill and we left. Yes, she treated. Wasn't that nice of her? So we went outside, and all these people were walking around, men holding hands with each other, women with their arms around each other's waists. Oh, that's nothing. Wait till you hear this. So we're walking and chatting, and we come across this row of motorcycles with a bunch of people standing around in leather pants and crew cuts. At first I thought that they were men, but it turns out they were women. <laughs> yes, and women. And they looked more like men than Lou and your Sal. All I kept thinking is, what would their mothers think? I don't know, but if my daughter looked like that, I'd lock her in her room. This one woman had a ring through her nose like a bull. She was wearing no blouse, and Ange, believe me when I tell you, if I had a body like she had, I would be ashamed to even look in the mirror. <coughs> yes, all she had on was a vest. There were so many spare tires around her waist, you couldn't even see her belly button. I was amazed. I couldn't believe that someone would actually walk out of the house looking like that. No wonder why they don't let them in the military. So we get further down the street and see these Orientals dancing on the corner like they had hot coals in their pants. There were people standing around watching, sort of like the colored in New York, on, spinning on like pieces of cardboard. Exactly, but these Orientals weren't looking for a handout. They were handing stuff out. I don't know, I didn't stop to take it. This part of the city is called the Castro Street, sort of like Greenwich Village, but worse. <laughs> I don't know, but if Lou saw what I saw, he'd be turning over in his grave. What they do behind closed doors is their own business, just as long as I don't have to see it. So, Gina and me, so, so me and Gina went to Joey's wedding, that's Alberta and Joe's son, and me and Nancy wind up sitting at the same table. She brought her son Mark with her, and what a polite and handsome young man, and so charming. He stood up when we came in and pulled out my chair. Um, I know, so I quick and introduced him to Gina. Gina, you know me, I'll grab any opportunity for Gina to meet a nice young man. Well, she's almost 30 and she's still not married. I can't wait around forever. Yeah, well, I doubt if it's going to be any time soon before this guy she's dating now pops a question. So I introduced her to Mark, thinking they just might hit it off. Wait, and I'll tell you. So we're sitting around the table talking about this and about that, and we're talking about how Nancy and me met. So the restaurant comes up, and Mark says he lives around the corner. So I ask him how he handles living so close to the Castro Street. And he looks at me real strange and asks what I mean. I know he knew what I meant, but I says, you know, all those funny men being so close and all. I did. And Gina looks at me real hard. Nobody says nothing. So I says, a good-looking guy like you, the ladies might get the wrong idea. So he says, what idea would that be, Mrs. Carrillo? He did, and he, he knew exactly what I meant. So I says, you know that you might be one of them. So he opens his eyes real wide and says, do you mean gay? Yes. And then Gina says, Ma, you can say it. It's not a dirty word. She did. I felt like they was ganging up on me. And then Nancy pats my hand and says real soft, Tony, Mark is gay. Yes, Ange, I was stunned. I didn't know what to say. Right, what do you say to something like that? So I look at him, and he's all smiling. So I says, well, you don't look like one of them. <laughs> well, what else was I supposed to say? Mark just laughs. Nobody says anything, and then Gina laughs. So I turn to her and says, look, I know gay people. And she says, who? Name one. So I says, Rainbow. Oh, come on, you remember him. He used to live in the old neighborhood and dress up at night and perform at some club. Yes, that's him. So Gina says, Ma, you haven't seen him in over 30 years. And Mark says something about it being funny that the only gay I know dresses in women's clothes and that's something about me thinking about people as stereotypes. I know, I don't think of people as no stereotypes. And then Gina says, Ma, I bet you didn't know that Dr. Regalio is gay. I know, did you know that? <laughs> you know, I had my suspicions about him. A good looking doctor in his 40s not married, so Gina says, if I never told you about him, you wouldn't know. Now, when you go home, are you going to find a new doctor? <laughs> I know, that's crazy. So I says, of course not. That's ridiculous. So Mark pats my hand and says, there you go. We're the same as you. We're people you respect and trust. Well, I got the hint and had enough of this talk, so I says something about it getting late, and when were they planning on serving dinner? No, he was a great guy. I'll tell you, that lazy son of mine should take some tips from him. All he does is sit around in his room with his friends listening to that god-awful music. If any grows up to be half the man Mark is, then I'd be a happy mother. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. 
let me tell you, for once in my life, I'm glad I don't seal the gift envelope before I leave the house. <laughs> they had no cocktail hour. <laughs> Nothing. And they weren't serving drinks. Something about the bride's parents requesting that no alcohol was served. <laughs> I know. Now you tell me. How are you supposed to have a good time dancing and all when there's no alcohol being served? <laughs> Nothing. Not even champagne for the toast. I took $20 out of the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> so I says to Nancy, when are they planning on serving dinner? And she says 7 o'clock. So 7.15 rolls by and we're still not serving dinner. 7.30, nothing. 7.45, still nothing. At 8 o'clock, the bride finally shows up at the top of the stairs. Well, it's about time, I said, and the bride's mother gives me this dirty look. So they finally do the couple's dances and stuff, and then we eat. Some god-awful chicken breast that was so dried out you needed a glass of water with every mouthful. But by this time, I was so starving, I didn't even, didn't even matter. I took out another $20. <laughs> I wound up giving them $60. I had to give them something. If I didn't have to hear Alberta's mouth about it the rest of my life, I would have left nothing. So me and Lou's song comes on, and Mark asked me to dance. What a charmer. And, then we're, and when we're dancing, he says, see those two? And nods to these two men dancing real close. Remember what it was like to be in love, he says. So I says, yeah. And then he says, then you understand. And just then, the two men kiss on the lips. Oh, come on, Ian. You don't mean that, do you? I never knew you were such a bigot. Well, what else would you call that comment? Now you tell me, if you saw a man and woman dancing out there, you wouldn't say anything, right? Then why now? I know, but that doesn't make them any less than you and me. Ange. Look, Ange, I'm not going to get into a big fight with you over this. Well, you believe what you want, but I think you're wrong. Can we please talk about something else? Yeah, well, so Jean is supposed to take the day off tomorrow and take me sightseeing. The Crooked Street and Fisherman's Wharf, I think? I don't know. She got the whole day planned out. I'm just glad to be spending some time with her because she's been working an awful lot since I've been here. Yeah, well, listen, let me go. This phone call's costing me a fortune. You can still pick me up at Newark, right? You got the flight information? Good. I'll see you then. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, okay. Bye-bye. And Ange, lighten up. <laughs>